church. It's good to see each of you. We've got a kind of a slim crowd this morning, but we've got a good crowd. We've got a good crowd, so it's good to see each of you. Uh, here we have a lot of our members out traveling, and so we need to remember them in our prayers. Uh, but we do have a few visitors with us this morning, and we're so glad that uh, you were able to come our way. Well, this coming Wednesday, I guess I'll be sitting out by the pool barbecuing or something, and the pool I'm talking about belongs to our dog. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a small pool like this, you know, and, and so that I, I'm sure I'll be out there uh, uh, with my dog uh, cooking up some chicken or something. And that's what I'm sure so many of you will be doing, uh, maybe going to the lake or, or enjoying your pool or, or whatever, enjoying it with family, and that is good. So Joyce and I do wish for each of you to have a very, very safe and uh, happy uh, fourth. Uh, we also pray for all of those traveling, uh, our members and family traveling, uh, that they will come back uh, uh, safely uh, to us. <clears throat> You'll find in the bulletin uh, this morning information regarding an issue that was raised over in Dallas, Texas this past week regarding a, a couple of bu uh, billboards that had been put up advertising uh, a sermon that was going to be preached today over in one of the churches. And the billboard basically uh, said that they, the, the, their sermon would be uh, looking at uh, some of the historical facts regarding uh, the founding of our nation. And it went on to proclaim that America is a Christian uh, nation. Now, obviously, the word Christian here is being used as kind of an umbrella to include uh, those believers in Christ. Uh, and so, the, of course, the proper biblical term of Christian will be not only the person who, who believes, but another person, the, the same person who uh, uh, repents, confesses, and is baptized and lives a Christian life. The Bible talks about that being a Christian not just a person who believes, but many times within the world, the word Christian is used uh, to apply to anybody who is a, a believer uh, in Christ. And my use of the word Christian here will, will include that, that believer, uh, knowing though that the Bible calls a Christian one who has uh, completely obeyed uh, Christ's will. And it was determined by the mayor of Dallas that that particular billboard that said America's a Christian nation, it was determined by the, that mayor that this is offensive. This is offensive, this statement that America is a Christian nation. <clears throat> so it was taken down. It was taken down. Now, my initial reaction to those who, who caused this, this phrase offensive uh, might be, and and would be to respond with something like, well, who cares <laughs> if you think it's offensive, all right? But, you know, it's the truth. That doesn't sound very Christian-like, though. Maybe we should be a little more refined in what we say with those individuals who take umbrage with a, uh, a statement that America is a Christian nation. <clears throat> I understand the feelings of our, you know, Jewish friends. Uh, I understand the, the atheist view. I understand the, the haters view, so to speak, uh, because I know they have their own religious beliefs. They have their own religious ideas. They have their own political agenda, I guess, for not wanting to embrace this statement. As more and more people come into our country, as more and more... Uh, individuals uh, find these, these far out religions uh, and as these individuals gain political power I'm afraid we're going to have these clashes not only within society but within our religious uh, world however on this particular issue it's relatively easy to determine this to determine this the answer to the question, is America a Christian, quote, unquote, nation? What happened in the original plans when this nation was developed will not change. America being founded upon Christian values. Was it? Is it? 
the beginning won't change it's there it was what was then and it's history now easily seen if we're willing to look you can have your own present day feelings okay about the country uh, you can have your own beliefs but no one should de deny the historical and empirical evidence that is present when our country was founded. And that particular evidence shows that our nation was founded upon godly values and Christianity. It's woven into the very fabric of our beginning. No one should deny that. Only the people who, who want to believe and really the downfall of the country would believe would believe something other than America was founded upon Christian values. Really to deny the evidence is, is foolish. It's foolish. But I believe the political correctness today tends to try to inform our nation of something else. And history is being rewritten, rewritten in many areas today because of the political correctness. The goal is to deny the influence of God and Jesus Christ in the establishment of our nation and to bring it forward to today and deny God and Jesus within our nation today. And this may very well be, okay, the anti-Christian attitudes that we're having to, to face today within society. But let's, let's go back for a few minutes to Jamestown, 1607. The leaders of the Virginia Company were members of the Church of England when they came over. Now, before they could, they could actually come over, they, they had to take an oath acknowledging the supremacy of King James. And in my research here, it kind of ties in with what we've been talking about on Wednesday night. They also had to... Uh, to uh, understand that the Pope had no power over King James, all right? They had to acknowledge uh, power that King James had. It was not subject to the Pope and Rome's authority. Before they even set sail to Virginia, they had to acknowledge this. And one of their goals stated in that uh, departure was the propagation of the Christian, quote, unquote, religion. Now, that's Jamestown, 1607. This is recorded history. Now, we can transport ourselves again back to 1620. Plymouth Rock, all right, the pilgrims. Puritans fleeing from religious persecution by King James of England, they brought with them and I've got a copy of the Bible they brought with them, the Geneva Bible, 1599, all right? Now, even though the King James Version, and this is a copy of the original 1611 edition of the, of the King James Version of the Bible, and if any of you would like to have a look at either one of those, I'll be glad to let you, let you do that. <clears throat> but they, they brought over with them this Geneva, okay, Bible, and these pilgrims landing in a different spot than the Jamestown uh, colony. Uh, there was a lot of uh, weather and food shortage and everything, everything caused them to go ahead and, and, and try to establish a, a settlement where they were. But history, uh, if you'll remember, I I'm, I'm, hope they still teach this in history, regarding the Mayflower Compact that was written by the pilgrims I want to read just a couple of sentences here. Listen to this. In the Mayflower Compact, in the name of God, amen, whose names are underwritten, the loyal subjects of our sovereign Lord King James, by the grace of God of Great Britain, France, and Ireland, King, defender of the faith, having undertaken for the glory of God and the advancement of the Christian, quote, unquote, faith. Now, this is the actual wording of the Mayflower Compact, and thus it becomes recorded history. 
again, keep in mind the proposal by many which states that our country, this United States of America, was not founded upon Christian values. All right? I've just talked about two issues here. The first people that came over from the old world, so to speak, landed it at, uh, in Virginia, the Virginia colony. The second, the pilgrims landing at Plymouth Rock, first two from the old country. They came over, both talked about the Christian religion and God. We cannot deny that. Let's come forward to uh, 1700s, so to speak, and let's just get right into the, 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 the revolution, okay, 1776. Let's see what a, a few people then said about Christianity and God. Noah Webster, now he's a colonial there who fought in the Revolutionary War, is an intellect, very high intellect individual known for compiling the first dictionary. We use it all the time, Webster's Dictionary, all right. What does he say? He says, the religion which has introduced civil liberty, and that's talking about the Revolutionary War there, civil liberty is the religion of Christ and his apostles. Another quote from him. This is genuine Christianity, and to this we owe our freedom, our free constitution of government. He goes on to say, it is extremely important to our nation in a political as well as religious view that all possible authority and influence should be given to the scriptures. For these furnish support of a Republican government. The principles of all genuine liberty and of wise laws and administrations are to be drawn from the Bible and sustained by its authority. Another quote of him that I love, it said, the Bible must be considered as the great source of all the truth by which men are to be guided in government as well as in all social and personal transactions. This is Noah Webster. Patrick Henry. It can't be emphasized too strongly or too often that this great nation was founded not by religionists, which many people want to, or I said that he didn't. Many people want to say that by religionists or deists, okay, believers in God, but that God doesn't work in our lives, all right? Patrick Henry said, no, it was not founded by religionists, but by Christians, not on religions, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen to Patrick Henry. Benjamin Franklin. The longer I live, the more convincing proofs I see that God governs in the affairs of man. And if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his notice, is it probable that an empire can rise without his aid? Now, the answer to this rhetorical question is no, can't happen, can't happen. What about George Washington? You do well to wish to learn our arts, and ways of life, and above all, you do well to learn the religion of Jesus Christ. These will make you a greater and happier people than you are. And Thomas Jefferson, who many believe was an atheist, didn't believe in Jesus, and, and, and didn't, didn't really believe in God, but the the proof, the history, it's totally against all of this. Thomas Jefferson, God, who gave us life, also gives us liberty. And can the liberties of a nation be thought secure if we remove their only firm basis, that is a conviction in the minds of the people, that these very liberties are the gifts of God? Thomas Jefferson says, because we have the liberties we have, because we have the liberties that, that we have received, they are gifts from God. 
He's basically saying, do you think we could have defeated this great country of England without God being with us? That's what Thomas Jefferson says. John Jay. Providence has given to our people the choice of their rulers. And it is the duty as well as the privilege and interest of our Christian nation to select and prefer Christians for their rulers. Now, folks, this is just a, a sampling of the individuals that we call our founding fathers. And I could have, I mean, I could have gotten a hundred more just like this. So don't be fooled by these commentators out there and by these people out there that, that, that try to tell you that America was not founded upon godly and or Christian values because it was. It was. Those who oppose these views want us to believe that the majority of the men were deists, as I said a while ago, who a believer believers in God, but not that God works through the affairs of man. Yet these individuals believe that God works through the affairs of man so much that they believe that God directed the Bibles and some of these things that actually happened during the Revolutionary War to favor the colonies. And if you study the Revolutionary War any at all, you, you would ask, yes, the question, you know, how did this happen? Why did this happen? Why did this happen? There are many people who point to the fact that just because a person is listed as a Christian, which many of the the, the signers of the Declaration of Independence and, and the writers of the Constitution and the Articles of Confederation to, uh, at the beginning of our nation. So many of these individuals, all of them basically, are listed as members of certain, certain faiths. Uh, these naysayers say, well, just because you're listed as a, as, as a certain member of a church, that doesn't mean that you actually are, and that's true. But these individuals would certainly have religious ideas and values implanted within them and would not be atheists or those who, who do not believe in uh, God and or Jesus. We should remember that history shows that godly influences was running rampant through all of these individuals in 1776 or so. And then there's the point of believing that just because a founding father is a Christian, that particular person intends to make or form a theocracy where religion rules. Now, just because a person is a Christian does not mean that, that they form a government. They wish to be a theocracy where religion actually rules through government. Why would the original founding fathers want that? That's what they had in England, and that's what they were leaving. That's what they didn't want here. Their idea was to prevent a national religion, a national religion where all of the citizens of the country were members of this national religion. Another point I'd like to make is very important. Every president from George Washington to Donald Trump has placed their hand upon the Bible and taken the oath of office. George Washington, even afterwards, he took the Bible and he kissed it upon the conclusion of his oath. That particular act of all of those presidents, in my opinion, voids any argument, okay, of those who claim separation of church and state. Without, I could name you lots of, uh, of issues that would void that argument of separation of church and state, but that one alone, that one alone. Look at the archive speeches. Look at the, the monuments. Look at the carvings. Look at the wording 
on many of our federal buildings there in Washington. And for somebody to claim separation of church and state is totally ludicrous. Ludicrous. For almost 200 years, America, our culture in America was friendly towards Christianity. As a matter of fact, America was in fact considered a Christian nation. Obviously, we weren't considered an Islamic nation. We weren't considered a Buddhist nation. We weren't considered a Hinduist nation. No. For years and years and years and years, we were considered a Christian nation. But for the past 50 years, you see, there's been some forces attacking that idea. It's been an aggressive assault becoming harder and harder and harder and harder and faster and faster and faster over the years. And what has happened is that over time, a gradual dismantling of some of these ideas that our country was founded upon has happened. Our religious, moral, and spiritual underpinnings are being removed, are being removed. What do we do? And you're probably saying, well, Norman, I'm glad you're finally getting to the lesson. What do we do? In Nehemiah 1.4, Nehemiah <coughs> goes in and, and, and he sees what's happened in Jerusalem and, and, and all of this, this distress and uh, reproach and, and, and how the walls of Jerusalem look and how everything there is going. Nehemiah 1.4 says, so it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Sat down and wept, prayed and fasted for days. When's the last time you sat down and wept for the condition of our own? When's the last time you've done that? When's the last time you prayed and fasted for God to give us godly leaders within our country? What can we do, you ask? Well, Nehemiah, the first thing he did, fasted, prayed, wept, and mourned. See, America's future is in the hands of Christians. And I'm talking about the real Christians right now. Not just the umbrella type Christians. Because folks, God hears our prayers. The cause of our problems, the cause of our cultural problems, the cause of, uh, of everything that we're having to endure right now, I believe, is spiritual. Is spiritual. And if it's a spiritual problem, we've got to have a spiritual answer. Continuing there in Nehemiah 1, what did, what did Nehemiah do? I'll read that very quickly, 5 through 11. And I said, I pray, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments, please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open that you may hear the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you now, day and night, for the children of Israel, your servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel which we have sinned against you both my father's house and I have sinned. What did he do? He went to God in prayer, fasting. First of all, he confesses his sins and says, Lord, forgive me for I have sinned. Verse 7 says, We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, nor the ordinances which you have commanded your servant Moses. Admits to God his failures and the failures of the people of Israel. 
Verse 8, remember I pray the word that you commanded your servant Moses saying, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though some of you were cast out to the farthest part of heavens, yet I will gather them from there and bring them to the place which I have chosen as a dwelling place for my name. Ask for forgiveness. Reminded God that if they would repent, that God would forgive and bring them back into his fold. What did Nehemiah do? He dropped to his knees and pleaded his case before God. Will we? Will we? Will we as a people? Will we as a nation? Will we as a group of Christians attempt to save our nation? Remember, only ten righteous people could have saved Sodom and Gomorrah if they had been only ten. During Noah's time, there was only eight righteous people. It's evident to me that over time, history shows that the world goes to pot in a handbasket. It's a phrase that means world's in trouble. <laughs> world's in trouble and getting worse. Therefore, it's very possible that the Christians in this very room will be the salvation for our nation and could very possibly be the salvation for the entire world. Cage, last question talked about there. When the Lord returns, will he find faith upon this earth? I want the Lord to say, yes. I want us to say, yes, Lord. You will find faith upon this earth. You will find faith within the family of the Skyline Church of Christ. I don't care what happens. Well, yes, I do care. <laughs> but as long as we remain faithful, we ourselves may save the world. If we get out on our knees, we weep, we fast, we pray to God for the conditions within our nation and what's happening around the world. We could very well save ourselves, our family, our nation. I'm going to paraphrase Joshua 24, 15 and we'll close. And if it seems evil for other groups of people or for other individuals or even other congregations to serve the Lord, then let them choose this day whom they will serve, whether the false gods within the world or self or materialism. But as for me and my family, the church of Christ at Skyline, we will serve the Lord. Will there be faith found upon the earth? Yes, Lord, there will be. We will not continue praying. We're going to be like the judge who got tired of being bothered. Father, forgive us. Help our nation. Be merciful to us. We're going to return to God. We're going to confess our sins. And we're going to save ourselves and save our nation. I want each of us here to be a Christian. One who is in the right and proper relationship with God. One who has obeyed all of his commands from believing to being baptized and thus added to the God, to God's family by God himself. That's what I want for each one of us and for the rest of the world. Any reason we can help you this morning?